All right, good morning, brothers and sisters. Today is June 5th, 2021, and I just want to go ahead and post this dream that I had last night. I do feel that it's symbolic of a coming judgment to California. Now, this is the third dream I've had of three different places. I've never dreamt of California before, but the first, if you've been following me, I've had three dreams or two dreams recently about, one was about California or about North Carolina that I was with Pastor Paul Begley and we had, we were, uh, we were going to North Carolina and I knew that it was something serious because in the scene before that I had seen a skeleton of a man rise up from the ground. So to me that, um, I just was made to know that there would be some kind of flooding. The next dream I had was about Florida. And I just posted these recently if you want to go back and if you haven't uh, seen them, go back and, and check them out. So the second dream was my family and I were going to Florida. Now, my family in these dreams is symbolic of the church because that's my family. My families are my sister and brothers in Christ. It isn't literally my family, you know, the my brothers and sisters or sister. So in that dream in Florida, we went, I was given the number four. And I was just made to know that there would be something, some kind of judgment coming to Florida. So last night in my dream, um, me and my family, the church, we were in California. Now, when I was in California, I was in this woman's apartment. I don't know who she was, but I saw water all over the floor. And I told her, I said that the good thing about living in California was that the water on the floor would dry up fast. So next, I was going to my room, uh, the room that I was staying in there, and I was, had been holding this baby, and it looked like a healthy baby, and I asked someone to hold it for me while I went into my room, but when I went to hand the baby over to my mom, the baby turned into two very premature-looking babies, very sickly babies, and they kept falling under the water as I was trying to hand them to her. So after I handed this off, I went into my room, and I had had a purse laying there on my purse laying there on the floor with some money in it. And I began to pack up because it was time to go home. So I saw this yellow, bright yellow sleeping bag that had bobby pins clipped all along the side. And as I picked it up, some fell on the floor. And as I was folding this, I realized that, wait, my family's going with me. We're all going back. Now, there was an unknown man and an unknown woman there with me as I was packing up and I you know I said to him I was like oh I forgot it or not that I forgot but I was like oh that's right the whole family's going and he looked at me like well yes uh, you know of course you're you're all going so I was thinking at that point that my mom you know she'd better get packing because we didn't have a lot of time left so I was folding up this sleeping bag and excited because we would all be going together my family and I would be going home together. Now remember, my family is the church, my brothers and sisters in Christ. So as I folded and packed my stuff and um, was uh, waiting for my mom to get her stuff packed up, uh, I uh, said to myself, I have to make sure and let my son know that we will be coming in at 1030. We will be coming home at 1030. That's when we'll be arriving. Now in another room, um, or in another scene, I was with, I think it was a, they were Japanese people or they could have been Chinese people. I don't know, but I was in this room and on the ceiling, I saw a ceiling fan, but this fan was, the blades were moving as fast as a helicopter and there was fear in this dream. And I remember ducking down because these blades were moving so fast. I knew that they could they could kill somebody. So I ducked down and and the Chinese woman that was with me, I told her, I said, you need to shut this off. You need to shut this off. This is very dangerous. And then that was the, the end of the dream. So I had a, a feeling or knowing that this was some kind of judgment coming to California. And I wasn't sure about the other scene, if that was just nothing or if it might have meant something. So what I did is I looked up 1030 in the Strong's Concordance. And the meaning of that in every one that I looked up, uh, the meaning of 1030 is gnashing of teeth. So in the going home, I believe is going home, going, you know, being raptured, going home to be with the Lord. 
So these were, were things that came to me right away. So I had an understanding of that. But I double checked with my prayer partner, Melissa, and I'm going to read to you her, her notes on it. And she said, California may need to be added to the list of those states that are about to experience a severe judgment. Since you were there, the Lord may be wanting you to intercede for them. That's what I think the part of the church was for. Because remember, I said I was with my family. So I think what the Lord is wanting is for the church, his family, to intercede for California. See, and I think that was the meaning of the Florida dream too. Because remember, I was with my family. Well, who is my family? Remember what Jesus said, who is my mother? Who is my brother? Okay, it's those that belong to Jesus Christ. The, they're my brothers and sisters. Okay, those are my brothers and sisters. Those, the ones that are in Christ. So I believe we were there because the Lord was showing us that he wants us to intercede in prayer for California. She goes on to say the water on the floor could very well be symbolic of the type of judgment coming. The underdeveloped babies likely speak of the spiritual condition of the people in California. Very poor, underdeveloped condition out there. They were drowning. And there's some crazy stuff going on in California right now. So anyway, she said for the second scene, her uh, what she got from the Holy Spirit was the fans in the room full of the, the Chinese or the Japanese sound like people planning on or plotting war. She said, very scary. I think you leaving and the meaning of 1030 speaks for itself. Jacob's trouble approaching. So we were, we were both had the same, the Holy Spirit gave us both this, pretty much the same meaning. Okay. So that's why I want to share this dream and ask you guys to please intercede and pray for California. Now I'm not saying this is going to happen just because I had a dream, but I find it very interesting that this is the third place the, the Lord has taken me to and, sh and made me feel or made me uh, made it known that these places need uh, they need for us to intercede and pray for. I believe something is coming. So we got the West Coast and we got the East Coast. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys this morning and ask you again to always, always play for pray for discernment. And pray for dis and pray for um those in North Carolina, Florida, and California. So again, this was, uh, I know this was a, a dream and I'm not saying that, you know, this is exactly what's going to happen or, you know, that it, you know what I mean? A lot of people like to come on and say, well, it was just a dream. And yeah, it, it was a dream, but I feel it was from the Lord. I was made known what was going on as far as the judgments. And so I'm just coming on to share this. So that you guys will all please pray with me, okay? So anyways, I pray you guys all have a wonderful day today. I pray for each and every one of you. I ask the Lord that he bless you and keep you. If you don't know Jesus, I'm asking you to call out to him today. Okay, while there's still time, while it was still day, reach out to him today, okay? Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. The only way. And the only... The, I'm feeling led to just add something here. I, I read an article about California, how they're they're trying to ban articles on, um, I think it's like sexual orientation. Um, any book that says that, or that kind of goes against the homosexual or the transgender, they want to ban that, okay? And we know that, of course, one of those books is the Bible, Okay, but they're talking about any kind of book that might be out there saying you should have, you know, one, you know, it should be man and woman. They want to ban that. And the thing that the Lord put on my heart the other day, I don't know if I seen something on TV or, or what it was about. Uh, it was either about transgender or homosexual. And the Lord said, laid this on my heart really heavy. And it was actually, it was a, a question he asked me. So I'm going to just kind of ask you guys the same thing. Uh, do you, if you believe in God, okay, if you believe in God, that he is the creator of the heavens and the earth, he's, um, the one and only God, he cannot lie. He says in his word, he is not like man. Okay. He's not like a man. He cannot lie. He does not make any mistakes and that he personally knit you in your mother's womb. So those that are saying, I was born this way, 
They are calling God a liar. So there's people out there that say you can be a, a gay Christian. But if you're not following God's word and you're in that situation, then you don't belong to God. Now, that's the same with any sin. I know a lot of people put so much emphasis on the sin of homosexuality. When, when there, every, A sin is a sin, okay? It would be the same thing if you were living in adultery but expected to, uh, you know, to uh, go to heaven, okay? I'm just going to come out and say it. God has divine moral laws, Okay, and as far as the homosexuality, what he showed me was, is, is if they truly believe that I am God, that I make no mistakes, I have never made a mistake, and that I am holy, then how can they say you were born this way? Because God does not make mistakes. Now, he has personally shown me that this is homosexuality. It's a spirit of homosexuality. And he also says in his words, those that don't listen to him, he gives them over to their lust. Okay, so this is what this is what he laid on my heart to share. And it's taken me a few days because I know there's going to be a lot of people that are going to not like what I'm saying. And I also want to say this, and you can believe me or not, but I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. There's been so much in the past, so many so-called Christians who have just made it really hard on those that are living in sin because they made it out like they're these horrible, you know, disgusting people and they just did more damage than good. And I'm here to tell you that I... Personally, I love you. I choose to love you. That's a choice. And I do. I love you just as Jesus loves you. But it is a sin. Okay? The same as adultery. The same as killing. It is a sin. And it is from the enemy. And if you want help, you just need to call out to the Lord. And he will help you. It won't happen overnight, but he will help you. That would, and what I was saying before, uh, people that were so hard on others and just made them feel horrible, we're not supposed to do that. We are supposed to love our neighbors, you know, whether they are in the sin of homosexuality or whether they are in the sin of adultery. We are to love them, pray for them, and, and bring them the news of Jesus. We are to try to help them. Not make them feel like they, they should just go jump off a cliff. We're, we, are, we were born into sin. We are sinners. But Jesus came and died for us. And so many people don't know the truth of God. And I can honestly say you were not born that way. We live in a broken world where everybody's saying it's okay now. And you have to remember, Jesus also said, we need to die out to our flesh every day. It's your flesh. Our flesh wants what it wants. That's why we are to walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. And it is hard. I'm always saying to the Lord, this flesh is a pain in my butt because it wants what it wants. So if you are gay or if you're a lesbian, um, I love you. I, I can't say it enough. I love you. I want you to be free. And I want you to know the truth about God. He does not make a mistake. He does not hate you. He loves you. And he wants you to come to him. He wants you to call out and say, listen, you know, I'm, I'm living in this sin of whatever. And I'm asking you, Father, please deliver me from this. Pull me out of this. Show me your truth. Because... What he was saying is his word is when people were told the truth and they didn't they didn't want to hear it, they didn't want it. He that's why he said I gave them over to their lust. But I can't stress enough what he spoke so clearly to my heart is if you truly believe in God, if you believe that he is all holy, he does not make mistakes. 
Remember, we are spirit and we're born into these bodies. These bodies. These are flesh. And we live in a broken world. Okay? So I know there's some people out here preaching this. Chelsea Bedell is one. She's saying it's okay to be gay. Anybody that's watching her and staying with her, I just don't understand it. Because if you read the Bible, you know right flat out she's lying. But she just wants people to like her. And I get it. I get it. We all want people to like us. And then there's Tim Henderson who says it's okay to be a carnal Christian. No, it's not. It absolutely is not. We are to change. We are to change and be more Christ-like. Where in the Bible did Jesus say it's okay to be a carnal Christian? And then we got Greg Jackson who's leading so many people away. And there's so many more pastors out there and teachers and preachers. Church, we don't have a lot of time. We need to wake up. And this is nothing ill against anybody. I can't say it enough. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. And I want to help you. So I'm asking you, just please call out to God today. You know, it happens. Many of us go through different things. Many of us go through shameful things. I remember when I came to the Lord, I was so embarrassed and ashamed when I had to just come before him and just confess everything to him. But it sure helped when I actually confessed it to him out loud and keeping it to myself. Because I, I wasn't hiding anything. God knows my thoughts. God knows everything about me. And it wasn't easy, but I just confessed everything. So I just pray that you, that you understand what I'm trying to say, that I love you. I love every person. I love them. I love my enemies. God said we are to pray for our enemies. You know, when you pray for them and bless them, you can't imagine what's going to happen. God does remarkable, amazing things. And it's like, we just need to free that, free ourselves with that and let God take care of it. You know, you guys know I struggled so hard with hurt and pain and and forgiveness, but I just every day I stuck with it. It's like, no, Jesus asked me to forgive forgive them. He forgave me. I'm no better than that person, that other person that hurt me. In fact, I can see similarities in us. So I get it. I understand. I have people I'm close to that are living in the sin of homosexuality, and I love them. I love them. I love them. And I'm just praying, praying, praying that God will open their eyes, that they will reach out. It's just so hard to talk to people anymore because they get so offended. I'm not saying that I'm better than you, but I'm saying I want you to go to heaven. I want you to... to uh, I want you to be saved. And if you, you take it as another meaning, then I'm sorry, but you're wrong. There's no agenda on, on, I have no agenda. This is a very hard thing to talk about, but the Lord is really leading me to do this. And it's taken me a while to even say this much. So please know everybody that comes across this video, I truly do love you. I truly, truly do. And I pray for each and every one of you. All right. And if I get anything else, you guys, I'll let you know. All right. Bye.